Welcome in, folks. Awesome. I'm going to try and get better about starting, giving you a little time to come in early and create an opportunity for a few, little bit of Q&A. <clears throat> lots of times that my friend Lisa types something in just after we get started and um <clears throat> and then I feel like I'm teaching and I'm unable to get to the questions in the chat so <clears throat> try and make some more opportunities for this so if there are any questions more than happy to answer them you know I got this comment excuse me fantastic this is like my favorite brew this is straight from the garden so it's mint tea and uh, I've got all of this holy basil also known as Tulsi happening in the garden lots of flowers and fantastic things hey Brian welcome uh, anyway so that's this is my tea um, I, I wanted to say that um, I got a comment and I think it was Lisa that asked it last week was uh, uh, she mentioned that this approach that we utilize of moving in and out of postures now to be clear what the distinction is we're not moving in and out of like vinyasa where we're doing the up dog down dog chaturanga up dog down dog chaturanga stepping into poses but rather moving in and out slow repetition really mindful often changing the rhythm of the breath it's a really effective method and to really improve the mechanics of the body. I discovered this approach of Krishmacharya's when I was about 30, I think, 30-ish. Yeah, around 30-ish. And um, uh, I, at that point, I kind of really, you know, uh, dedicated myself, I had about 10 to 10 years, 15 years, of really strong asana, also with meditation, uh, I really got the meditation bug and was trained in meditating from the very beginning. But nonetheless, my, my peers and I, we got together. It was the early days of yoga work, so we had a chance to kind of not try and better each other and out asana each other, but there was a, an element of it, certainly, that was inspiring, and I wound up uh, getting, it was kind of the height of my flexibility and strength when I was in my mid-30s. But, you know, I couldn't help but notice, one, that I was cracking my neck a lot, just, you know, deliberately, actually. And the other thing was that um, my lower back was also popping and knocking and all this kind of stuff. So, flexible, yes, big time. But still, there was a certain level of instability in my back or even this hypermobility in some cases. So I did, I, that's when I was introduced to this approach of Krishmacharya, which is this, the dynamic action of moving in and out of postures. And I, I noticed within about three months of doing it consistently, I, I began to do a personal practice, I had personal practice, moved toward that approach, and wow, really within three months, I, I, I realized that my neck was no longer popping, my lower back was no longer cracking, nor did I have the desire and the need to do it. So it was like this significant breakthrough. And uh, I just thought I'd mention that because Lisa asked that in chat last time, and I thought I would just uh, speak to that. Okay, well, let's get going. Um, <clears throat> welcome. So this is, the, this is the short form of practice. You know, yoga offers us so many things, but I don't know if there's anything more significant about what it can offer us, then self-regulation really as a foundational piece. One of the, one of the, I would say one of the causes of so much unrest in our society, anxiety and depression and anger and frustration and fear. So much of it has to do with us not self-regulating, which is coming back to a rhythm of restful ease. It's actually what this what uh, this is inspired by this 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 class is inspired by so the breath gentle movement mindful movement uh, we can in a fairly quick amount of short period of time really create a significant shift so that's what I want to do again today 
take advantage of these short practices to maybe it will make you more likely to practice if you have uh, some resources that don't require a lot of time and yet can create a shift in your state. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Let's go ahead and stand tall. Feet about hip distance apart. Arms by your side. Just begin to even your breath out for a moment and as you do it, body stable. Begin to just observe what you bring to the moment. So presumably you've come from something, a series of events, it's created a certain momentum, certain imprinting in our awareness, emotional, perhaps emotional color, particular rhythm in your thoughts. Now let's begin to breathe very consciously. Inhale, raise your arms. And exhale and lower them. Okay, so let's shape the breath. So you're inhaling whatever's comfortable and now exhaling deliberately about five counts, softly drawing the belly back and up. And inhaling. And exhaling. Five counts. Now let's do it six counts a couple times. Six count exhalations. And as you're shaping the breath, begin to notice that it has the effect of helping to shape the mind. Six count exhalation. Let's do it one more time. Six counts. So you take an adjustment breath, have the intention to be more in the present moment, more in a place of balance and ease. Now let's bring the feet together today. Modified chair pose, so the feet come in together. So we're going to inhale, raise the arms. And then exhale, sink the hips. Continue the exhale, drop the upper body onto the thighs slowly, release the weight of the head, neck long. Breathe in and lean back. Okay, same action, five count exhalation. Squeeze the legs together. Soften your neck. Inhaling, leaning back. We're going to progress. Six count exhale, then seven, and then eight. Now, notice that I don't actually fold until the last part of my exhalation. This is the eight count exhale. Take your time. Now, just stay there and rest. Squeeze your legs tight together. So the knees drawing in, heels are together. As you're breathing out, contract the navel in. Can you soften the neck, Can you soften the upper back even a little bit more? If you notice there's some instability, the hips or your weight is jiggling from one foot to the other, a little bit of shakiness, just observe it. This is actually tension coming to the surface and yogis believe that in physical instability actually was reflective of unprocessed thought. Next inhale, you're going to come up, drop into chair pose, just three breaths. Still drawing the knees in. And then inhale, push to straight legs, please. And exhale, lower both arms. Immediately have the intention to return to the present moment. Nice. From there, open up your feet hip distance apart. 
excuse me, a little wider in shoulder width apart. So we're moving in and out of twisting side to side. Initially, I'm going to have you twist in the standing, in, in the standing position, and you're going to place your left hand onto the outside of the right foot. So to do that, go ahead and bend that knee. Do I have that right? Yeah. Inhaling. So you're bending the opposite knee. Exhale and twist. Left hand to the outside of the foot. Roll open. Squeeze the navel. Turn towards ceiling. Inhale all the way up. If you can, with a little more emphasis on the exhalation. So we're looking to affect the parasympathetic nervous system. Keep moving. Exhale. Just finding a little more space each time. And uh, welcome back. I've missed you. Adiom. Take your time. No rush. Part of it is, you can think of this in a very general way as counterposing life. Life is the contortion. Your asanas are a way to undo the contortion of life. Okay, so let's do one more time each side. And exhale. Okay, we're going back to the first side. And you're going to stay five breaths. So if it bothers the neck, you can look down. But at any point, if it's comfortable, turn the chin, look up, cue the navel to twist, twist toward the ceiling and flatten the back as much as you can. Those of you more flexible, you're also straightening your right knee. Keep breathing, please, and emphasize the exhalation. And now if you want, we can even combine this movement. Inhale, look down. Exhale, turn the head, look up. Just this general unwinding and releasing. Inhale, look down. Exhale, look up. Twist a little bit more deeply. Let's do it two more times. Okay, and then slowly inhale. Come all the way back up. So let's take a moment to adjust. As if you return to the part of you that does not transition. So throughout life, we're constantly transitioning. We're feeling identified with this change and that change and this role and that role. And the yoga tradition reminds us that a part of us remains the same throughout all of the transitions in our life. Remembering that is also a way to self-regulate. Let's change sides. Exhale, twist. Again, I'm flattening my back. Now, if you want, start the action. Look down, inhale. Exhale, look up. Those of you more flexible, you are straightening your left knee. Look down. As you exhale and turn your head, the uh, twist deepens. This is the counterpose for, from life. Life leaves an imprint. What we're doing is removing, dissolving, surrendering out of the imprinting of the past so we can be more present, more clear, less reactive, more responsive. One more time, please. Look down, inhale. Exhale, twist, look up. Big spread through your collarbones, flattening the back. And then slowly release. Take your time, come back up to center. Let's step the feet hip distance apart again. And we'll 
adjust. So there's a, the matter of coming into a neutral standing position. So part of that is samastiti. So I adjust physically. But just impo as important is this remembering. The word mindfulness actually has the same root as the word smirti in Sanskrit, which means literally remembrance or smarana, which means... Actually, smarana is the word for remembrance. Smirti is retention power, or the ability to recall whatever is most helpful. So there's physical samastiti, mental samastiti. Okay, so from here we're going to do simple forward folding. So I'll ask you to put your hands on your hamstrings just below your buttocks. Inhale, lift your heart. And exhale, slide your hands down your legs. Lower back toward your thighs. Breathe in, come back up leading with the heart, keeping the neck long. So no lifting of the chin today, collarbones lift. Please exhale down for five counts. Now, please stay in the forward fold for just one breath, a five count exhalation. Then slowly, Inhale and come up, again leading with the heart. Now you'll exhale, forward fold, six counts. Stay this time for two breaths, please. Six count exhalation if it's comfortable. And as you're shaping the breath, you're affecting the body as well as the mind. Inhale, slowly back up. We'll go in the same kind of progression. So now you exhale down seven counts. Take your time. Shaping the mind. Stay three rounds for seven, seven counts each, uh, specifically in the exhalation. As you're breathing out, dispersing all of the directions that the mind might otherwise take, including how it compelled it feels or is to move back to the past. Next inhale, we come up. So this last round is eight count exhalation to take you into the forward bend, but now I'm going to ask you to stay, and we're going to do some little bit of modification with the breath. So stay in the forward fold, take another eight count exhalation. shaping the mind, releasing the body. Again, inhale normally. This time, breathe out seven counts and do your best to pause for one count. And when you pause the breath, suspend the movement of the mind. Do it again. Inhale normally. Still in the forward fold. Exhale. Seven counts. Pause. One. Then stay there. Please breathe in normally. Breathe out six counts and pause for two. Again, sliding the mind into that suspension. One more time. Inhale normally. Exhale. Six counts. Pause two. Just stay there now for a normal breath. Whatever is comfortable. Then when you're ready, inhale and come back up to standing. Sama stiti. So stiti is this extraordinary word. Its basic meaning is unsurpassed calm. And it's a state or a quality of experience that rises from the mind, from the nature of mind, rather than trying to be something that you're attaining. You're allowing 
this essence of mind to reveal its innate quality of calm. Sama meaning equal or balanced. So create this opportunity to recover your sama stiti, balanced, unsurpassed calm. From here, exhale, fold forward again. Please step back to downward dog. And we're going to stay in downward dog for a full two minutes. One to one breathing. So without overstretching the shoulders, you cue the inner thighs to lift. You cue, excuse me, to lift and to press back. You're creating a spaciousness in the lower belly as well as the lower back. As you exhale, you draw the point just below navel toward the back body. So this is asana practice. Stay in the pose. Stabilized posture allows the mind through the vehicle of sensation, through intention, this intention to surrender, to relax, to become more and more present moment aware. So about another half minute, please. In a sense, my goal in this particular practice was to create, in a very short space of time, a shift in our state where we come back to restful ease. So last complete breath, please. And then inhale and come down. Sit tall for a moment. And then inhale, raise both arms overhead. And exhale, fold forward, sweeping your hands to your sacrum, onto the back. Repeat it. Inhale, lift the heart, come up. And exhale forward, five counts. Place the mind in the lower belly, which contracts as you're folding. Inhaling up. Then again, a six count exhalation. Notice you have to be even more mindful, more aware as you slow the breath down. And then two more times, seven counts and then eight count exhalation. So we're directing the nervous system, directing the mind, creating shapes in the body that lend themselves to creating the momentum toward restful ease, self-regulation. Rest in the forward fold for a moment. Excellent. Remember, sama stiti. Stiti is a natural state of mind. It's not something you are idealizing, reaching for. You're surrendering into it because it's an innate quality of the mind. Please sit up, stretch out onto your stomach on the floor. We're going to put our hands on the floor by the sides of the chest. Okay, inhale and lift as much chest off the floor as you can and simultaneously lift your right leg, please. And exhale down. Still deeply meditative. Deep inhale, chest opposite leg. And exhale. Alternate sides one more time.
Now, please, both legs, chest. Stay there. Squeeze the elbows in. Now, inhale, spread the legs as wide as you can. Exhale, pull the knees together. Squeeze the elbows in. And repeat it. Spread the legs. Draw them in. Keep as much thigh off the floor as you can. No tension in the shoulders. Slight lift of the chin. Squeezing the knees together as you do it, sense also that you're contracting the pelvic floor. As you're breathing out, pelvic floor contracts, knees together. Two more times. Good. And come down, please. Turn your head on its side. Relax. Turn your head to the other side. Great. Stretch your right arm over your head. Roll through your right side. Come over onto the back. And as you come onto your back, you can bend your knees. Place your feet on the floor, hip distance apart. Go back once again, turn inward. Remember, Samastiti. The path back to the restful state, the ceaseless flow of calm. From here, we're going to inhale, press into bridge pose. Just go straight up into the posture. Leave your arms on the floor by your side. If you can, interlace the fingers and wedge the upper arms in. So press down through your outer upper arms. Press the back of the head into the floor and the base of the neck, C7, so that's the cervical seventh vertebrae, is off the floor. That's the big one at the base of the neck. In fact, as I hold the pose, I'm always thinking of moving that bone at a diagonal line toward the third eye center, like through the, through the roof of the mouth and into the third eye center. And when I lift that bone off the floor, what I notice, I notice if I'm not rigid, is that my, the whole of my cervical spine slightly arches. It's not flattening. There's actually space between your neck and the floor, and you encourage that even as you're lifting your breastbone. Okay, let's come down, and on the way down, shift your hips to the right a few inches, extend the left leg straight onto the floor, Take your arms out to the side so that the arms are perpendicular to the spine in line with your shoulders. Take your right leg vertical and exhale, take it across your body. Stay there, please. So the leg does not come to the floor. And inhale, uh, bend the knee, squeeze the heel toward the seat, and then exhale and straighten the leg. And I repeat it. And one more. Stay. You can either look up straight into the ceiling or possibly even turn your chin the opposite way. So toward your right thumb. Okay, let's come back to center. Balance in the center, both feet on the floor, knees bent. 
shift to the opposite side. Okay, so I know it's a subtle practice, but again, if more people just took half an hour, best case scenario, every day to soothe and balance the nervous system, we'd be living in a different world. So, but you can be the representative of what that looks like. Okay, so once again, stay there and now you start to bend and straighten the leg. Become aware of what you're doing with your opposite leg. That knee is as straight as possible. Go ahead and bend and straighten the knee a couple more times, please. And then hold it. Stay. Breathe comfortably. Navel contracts. Spins in opposition to the twist. And then, once again, come back to center. Hug both knees into your chest. Then inhale the thighs away, one hand on either shin bone. Just blow your knees and exhale both thighs in. And do this just a few times to release the back, to prepare it for Shavasana. Then rest. If you want to rock a little bit from side to side, with your thighs into your chest, be my guest. And then when your back feels happy, go ahead and stretch your legs out onto the floor. Relax your arms by your side, your heels about hip distance apart. Allow your breath to find its own natural effortless rhythm and your intention is to soften from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes and fingertips. have the intention to move more and more thoroughly into a rhythm of absolute effortlessness. Mental activity dissolving into the present moment. Now please begin to consciously shape your breath into the following rhythm. Inhale is four counts, exhale is eight. Keep in mind though, that this is not pranayama. It's about self-regulation. Shaping the mind. So it's not about volume. much more about the rate of the flow. In for four, out for eight.
be aware that the mind is being guided into the gift of the present moment. If you're comfortable doing so, you'll extend the rhythm in four, out eight, pause four. And during the pause after four, this is an opportunity for the mind to be welcomed into silence. If it's preferable, you can shorten the pause. As you deepen into the suspension of the movement of breath, You begin to discover that pause becoming more and more effortless. In time, you experience yourself being drawn into what's called Kevala Kumbhaka. Kumbhaka in suspension, Kevala, refers to the state of all oneness which as we enter that experience, the breath pauses on its own. I'm going to invite you to continue to surrender into that pause again in time. You're so whole, so at one, that the breath pauses on its own. And to abide here for at least a few more minutes. Soaking, truly soaking in a rhythm of restful ease. <laughs> <laughs> 